lesson today is going to be on the user manager, uh, how to add and take away people uh, that will have access to the control system. So on the building we're logged in in here, we're going to start under the advanced tab, which is where our user manager is located. And you can see the default tab is our user manager. Um, by default, every Tritium system and Woodman system as well will have a default administrator level password and a default guest password. Now there's two things to keep in mind about these. The admin level password, um, Woodman Controls has put in uh, a default background emergency password that we don't share with anybody and that is used for any situation where a customer would accidentally delete all their login information or there's a system crash or uh, whatever the reason might be it gives us a backdoor way back into these systems um, for recovery purposes uh, the guest username and password is just guest for a login with no password um, and that is allowed to log into the system with absolutely no rights at all just looking rights uh, but keep in mind once the guest is enabled by default you can see this is disabled if this system or if the guest password is enabled the only thing that will ever log in is guest so as soon as you go to the website the only the only log in fact you probably won't even be prompted for a username or password the first time you log in it's just gonna log straight in under the guest account um, so I would really suggest not to ever use that that system um, the rest of these, like BACnet and Balancer, uh, some of those are all just defaults that are built into the system. Um, and then you can see we have all the Woodman Controls employees in there. Uh, the Woodman Controls employees are in there just so that they have um, the ability to go in and fix any kind of oh, um, any kind of control system issue that might be had. Uh, we can log in, uh, do troubleshooting from anywhere. Uh, Woodman takes the username and passwords of each employee pretty seriously. Uh, me, even being an owner and the uh, uh, administrator of all these systems, I don't know anybody's password. Uh, we want, and we want to keep it that way. Uh, there's, there's just too many situations where uh, we don't want people sharing passwords. So as a rule, Woodman does the same thing. Um, because it can be kind of difficult to set up a user the very first time, uh, by default, we've created the customer low customer medium, customer high, and customer admin. And what that's set up for is um, a, a quick and easy way to create a new user on a system without having to go through all the hassle of figuring out what all the different settings are. So as you can see in this case, the people that are running this building uh, just defaulted and used the customer admin. Um, so the easiest way to do this is you would just right click on whatever customer you're trying to create so let's say you have a new employee and we're gonna hit duplicate and we're just gonna call this new guy okay so now down at the bottom of the list we're gonna have a customer lol uh, which is actually listed under the full name we could change that to whoever it is the the new guy is gonna be the login name so let's go inside to this all you do is double click and this is the setup for this particular user um, so new guy his full name would be new guy or John Doe whatever it could be um, the login what you type in for your username is going to be new guy uh, enabled true so if you have a user that you don't want to allow in for a period of time or a particular uh, for whatever reason it might be disabled and that username uh, and password won't work anymore Expiration. We use this quite often uh, at the beginning of projects for, say, balancers and commissioning agents, uh, engineering firms that want to get a, a handle on how the system's working. We can give them a username and password, and then that will expire out of the system after three months or six months, whatever we decide. Uh, permissions. This is one of the uh, tougher places to set up, and that's where we have the customer low, medium, high, and admin set up. Uh, customer admin, by the way, the only uh, the only thing that can't do, uh, customer admin cannot change or delete the emergency backup admin password. So that's the only reason we have a customer admin. They're capable of doing anything in the system, uh, anything at all, except deleting that one password. Uh, so we can keep that backdoor way into the system. Um, so permission levels, 
Um, this is really pretty simple, but it would take a little bit of uh, practice if you haven't done it before. General is going to be just looking at graphics. So in this case, since it's a low customer level, they're able to read, uh, and they're going to be able to read and see um, operator level and admin level type things. So when they look at a piece of equipment, they're going to be able to see the set points, see the the space temperatures. They're going to see all that stuff, but they're not going to be able to change any of it. Same if they go to look at histories for, say, space temperature. Uh, view alarms. Now in this case, uh, on this one, they are allowing uh, customer level, low levels, to actually acknowledge alarms. So uh, in this case, if there was an alarm and they wanted to acknowledge that there was a low space temperature alarm, this user would be capable of doing that. They're also able to view schedules view the services, which would be, say, your web service, um, any kind of BACnet level services. Uh, they can view them, but again, they can't change anything. This is read, write, and invoke, uh, and then view users. So they can log in, and since they are read-only um, and a low-level customer, the only thing they're going to be able to see is essentially their own username, and they can modify their own password and their own setup and some of that, but they can't, they can't give themselves more permissions. So moving on from there, a network user, this would be on a bigger system, uh, say a college campus, uh, where we have them set up on the supervisor level, and this would push that username and password down to all the subordinate buildings. Um, so they would have one username and password for an entire campus. Um, in this case, they typically just default to true, even though this isn't that type of situation. In this, in this case, it doesn't make any difference because it's a single building, but on a bigger facility it may. Uh, prototype, uh, this again is being used on when it's getting passed to another building, what type of prototype they're using. Uh, we can get in that into a more advanced uh, user setup in the future. Um, real simple here, username and password, or I'm sorry, just password and the confirm password. You can type in an email address if you want. Uh, all the Woodman employees have theirs in there. Cell phone numbers, all the, uh, you can put those in if you want. It makes no bearing on how the system works. Facets, this can be a little more important. Um, unit conversion, we convert everything to English, obviously. But we do have some pharmaceutical customers that want to see everything in metric and Celsius. And changing that to say, instead of being uh, English, to have it say metric, will just automatically change all those settings in the system. So when you pull up an air handler, it's going to say 21, 21 degrees C instead of 75 degrees uh, F. The navigation file, now the navigation file, again, is a little bit of a complex thing to try and do by yourself. That's why we have defaulted and set up two Woodman navigation files, um, uh, Woodman Nav and Woodman Mobile Nav. And as you can guess, the Mobile Nav is for a tablet or uh, a cell phone, something along those lines. Um, the navigation file, and I'm going to kind of try and show really quickly what that does, the navigation file is just showing at the top of the screen what you're going to see when you log in. So I'm going to log in with mine real quick here. And this is what the navigation file is creating. It's creating home uh, with services, summary plan if we want to see what services are located inside there. Um, I have an administrator level password, so you can see all those schedules. Uh, we can go back and look at, say, outside air temperatures. It's just giving a quick and easy way uh, to go through the systems. Now, some systems, they go through and set up really elaborate uh, navigation files um, and use those. Uh, we tend at Woodman to use more of the, the graphical summary around the outside for the navigation, so we tend to not really use this a whole lot. But some of the older systems or systems that don't have um, the newer style graphics may need to use that a little bit more. Now down below that, now we get into just the default web profile. So this is when you log into the system, how the building is going to react or how it's going to look. Um, auto log off, by default, we always have that enabled. So just like on any website or a banking website, 15 minutes of no, of no activity and the system's going to automatic log you off. Um, there's a whole bunch of types of profiles you can use here, but really we only use two of them. There's a basic web profile, and what the basic web profile is, is what you're seeing right here. Uh, there's no navigation trees on the left or anything like that, it's just the graphics. So in most cases you'd be looking at this in a, a full screen mode. Um, this is exactly what you would see in that basic, um, with that basic login. I'm going to change that quick and go to the default web profile. 
And I want to show real quick what the difference is. Okay, so now that we've logged in with our default web profile, now we have this whole tree over here on the left-hand side, and we can see all the equipment and air handlers and services and applications. Um, this would be more of an administrator level uh, type login. So typically your customer low and customer medium uh, login levels are not going to show this tree on the left-hand side. They're going to show just graphics. And then when you get into the admin level, um, and high level, they're going to show these on the left because those are users that should um, have a pretty good understanding of the system. Um, let's go back and go through the last little bit of this. Okay, so going through that, the next thing we have, um, well, a applet reload on hyperlink, uh, all that is saying, most of this is just typical navigation stuff you're going to have um, on any any website so if you go to another website and come back to this one it's going to reload the the Java applet in the background uh, force password reset it's exactly what you would think it is if you have an employee that can't remember their password um, or uh, it could be a, a situation where they just you just need everybody to change their password set that to true next time they log in it's going to force them to uh, reset their password um, and then we can also set up password expiration so that every so many months or every so many weeks um, you can force password resets. Um, and then newer to the 3.7 version, uh, we have a mobile web profile uh, which will work on um, cell phones, um, tablets, all that type of stuff will have a mobile web profiles. Um, we have one default profile that really doesn't have a whole lot in it. Um, it's just giving you a normal navigation pane um, just like you're typically seeing um, on the left hand side of the screen is just giving you a navigation pane to this over here. Um, the mobile profile is exactly that. It's set up for mobile. It's not graphically oriented. Uh, it, it's all text based. You're kind of driving through this tree. Um, we'll, do, we'll do another video on this sometime, but you're driving through the tree. It takes a little more, uh, a little more understanding of the system in the background. So that's how the user manager works. If there's any questions, uh, please give a call to Woodman Controls. Thank you.